to write. Okay. So the, the second point I wanted to make, you might have already wondered about this. This is called the Lorentz transformation, right? But I said that these postulates here were first thought of by Einstein, which is true. So it seems a bit weird that this is named after Lorentz and not Einstein, right? Lorentz was a different physicist. So there is a reason for that, why this is named after Lorentz and not Einstein. And it's because Lorentz came up with these transformations first, but in a different context, in a different way. And if, so I want to tell you what that is. So Lorentz was looking at the symmetries of the electric and magnetic forces. Symmetries of electromagnetism. Okay, so in the second half of the 19th century, um, the laws of electromagnetism were very well defined, well, defined, discovered, explained by Maxwell's equations. So Maxwell wrote down a set of equations which characterized everything that they knew about the electric and magnetic forces to that date. Um, so I'll just write them down for reference. If you don't know them, don't worry about it. It's something that you'll see in future physics courses. So they look like this. So those are, are them. If you haven't seen them before, you certainly will once you take a course in electromagnetism. Okay, so just to briefly explain here, E is the electric field, B is the magnetic field, and these are some differential operators on them. Okay. So the, the most important thing for you to note at the moment in these equations is the appearance here of the speed of light, C. This is very significant um, because you can show that these equations imply that there are solutions of these equations which are wave-like. Okay? So there are wave-like solutions of the electric and magnetic fields, and these waves propagate with the speed of light, C. So this was the evidence that led Maxwell to conclude that light is just a wave in the electric and magnetic fields. Okay. Now, what Lorentz was doing was he was looking at these equations and he was seeing what would happen if you consider these equations from the perspective of two different observers. Right? So, namely, if this observer S measures some electric and magnetic fields okay, and, and discovers they obey these equations, then what about the other observer, S prime? Will the, obs will the magnetic and electric fields that he measures also obey the same equations? That was the question he was asking. Okay. So let me call these ME, Maxwell equations. If S measures electric and magnetic fields which obey the Maxwell equations, then will the fields measured by S prime also obey? Maxwell's equation. This is the question that Lorentz was considering from a theoretical perspective. Okay? And you can show that if you assume the Galilean transformation of space and time, then the answer is no. If, the, if you take the Galilean transformation of space and time to be the correct one, and you assume that the observer S 
finds fields which obey Maxwell's equations, then the fields measured by observer S prime will not obey Maxwell's equations. Okay? So if you assume these Galilean transformations of space and time, then the answer is no. Okay? So the Maxwell's equations are true only in one frame in this case. Okay? For one observer, they're true. For another observer, they're not true. But what Lorentz shown, showed was that if you assume the Lorentz transformations to be true, then you can get the answer yes with some additional assumptions. So Lorentz showed that if you assume these Lorentz transformations of space and time, then both observers will get the same set of equations for the, ma for the electric and magnetic fields. Okay? So therefore, these equations are true for all observers if you use the Lorentz transformation. Okay. So that's why the transformation is named after Lorentz. Okay? Because he first discovered its importance in this context. So Einstein's contribution then was to say that this transformation is not just something special about night or not just something special about electric and magnetic fields, but it's true for everything. Okay? So this should be taken as a fundamental transformation of space and time. So that was Einstein's contribution. 